everybody, and welcome back to the Interrealms. It's Season 2, Episode 7, and today's episode is all about the numbers. Which is kind of weird, because I'm not really that good at math. But wait till I show you what you can do with nether portals and a little bit of math. I promise it's something you have not seen done before. None of that silly dividing by eight. Oh yeah, you have to do that for nether portals, but I've got a new secret, and it's all about the numbers. But the first numbers we need to talk about are the sheer number of hoglins dying down there on that platform. Look at them! In fact, if we fly down from our AFK post, you'll notice that things, well, they look a little, little different down here now. Ooh, it's noisy up there. Let's wait till these guys die and let me explain how this is working to give us all the lightly glazed, lava encrusted, tasty, tasty pork we could ever want. We're having pork chops and apple shosh. Oh, they're quiet now. So if we come over here, you'll see. Yeah, yeah, these are, these are filling up. And, and that's not all. In fact, that's full of pork, and that's full of pork, and oh, I just made somebody mad. Did you hear that? Oh, we got another hoglin dying. Oh, yes, it is working so well. We just... Uh-oh, he's not gonna like me. Okay, run it away. Run away! Run away! Run away! Fly, fly. I can fly. Fortunately, I have some tasty pork on me. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> it's not over there. We're gonna go toward Crimson. Crimson! Here we go. We're back. Looks like everything is cleared. So we are safe to talk about pork chops. So take a look at this thing. It's a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger than when we were here last time. If you remember last time, we just had three platforms, three little square platforms going out. And in 15 minutes, we got about, uh, you know, three, four stacks of pork. So what I've done is I've added these other little sections and rounded it out, give it in a second level. And by doing that, we've actually increased our output by a little over five times what it was before. So in 15 minutes, I'm getting what it would take an hour and 15 minutes to get. Not bad. But with all this pork, well, we need a shop. But before we start building our pork shop, I want to show you something really cool about nether portals. So jump on through here with me, and we will come out. Hmm. Where in the world are we? I haven't seen this before. Hmm. A big spaceship, it looks like, of some sort. There's the stars out there, and we've got some equipment and a captain's chair here. Oh, I see the very top of our space station over there. In fact, I think if we go over here and look out the window, yep, there's our space station down there. So we're, where are we? Well, let's take a look. Get my rockets in my offhand and, hmm, curly pink tail. Flames shooting out of the back. Pink floppy ears. You know what I think this is? I think our hoglin portal is stationed up here in the SS Swine Trek. Remember this? Remember this guy from the Muppet Show years and years ago? Pigs in space! I thought we'd bring him on here and build him right on the server, and we would have a way of getting straight up to the nether roof through another portal located just... Ow. Well, that, that didn't work. Located just inside this ship. But there's a problem. Yep, there's a problem. Because if we go back outside, you'll see we are directly above the monolith. And there's a portal. 
there's a portal in our monolith. And if you know anything about nether portals, you know that Minecraft doesn't like it if you put two portals in the same X and Z coordinates. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you there is a way to fix that. Yep, there is a way to have two portals directly above each other and still usable, taking you to two completely different locations. Oh, look at that base back there. I love it. So allow me to land down here on the monolith island and show you how the math works. So I have behind me two pillars representing the overworld and the underworld of the nether. The overworld represented by dirt and the nether represented by netherrack. And if you look here, just to make things simple, I've removed the X and Z coordinates and only put the Y coordinates. That's the height in the world. And the swine track is up there at height 142. That's the Y coordinate of the portal that we get to by flying up to the swine track. Aw, look at her. And down here in the monolith, the portal is located at Y38. That's the height in the world that the portal is located at. What you want to do to connect this to two other portals in the nether is find the midpoint, which in our case is 90. 90 is exactly between 142 and 38. So when you go into the nether, assuming you've divided by eight and placed those portals correctly, you want to start with a midpoint of 90. Now you can place your top portal wherever you want. Our nether roof portal is at 129. And you can place your bottom portal almost wherever you want. Do the math, figure out the distance from 129 to 90, and then place your portal under the roof at that distance. And there you have it. By using the identical midpoint, again, assuming that the XY coordinates match in the overworld, and the XY coordinates match divided by eight in the nether, you've got yourself two separate sets of portals. Now these portals don't need to be this far apart. In fact, you could have one portal at Y89 and one at Y91, as long as they are the same distance from the midpoint, and you've got yourself a working portal. One of the fun parts about this is you can actually use it to travel vertically in the overworld by traveling a shorter distance in the nether. But we'll get there in a second. We've been through our portal up here in the swine track, so we know it works. So let's head down here, down, 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 to our portal here under the monolith. Oh, look, we've got a friend. Hey, buddy. Now, when I go through this portal, it's not gonna link up to the nether roof. Instead, it links down here in the nether. And because I had to make it the same distance, let's head back right back up here. And here we are in our nether hub. And when we want to get down to the monolith, we can jump right down. By the way, the warped vines work great for MLGing. I've got the string there so that it doesn't keep growing all the way up and slow down our downward travel. And when we head back out this way, we find ourselves back with our friend down here in the monolith. See, here's our villager trading. Here's our mob farm. Yep, it's all down here. We've got two completely separate working portals on the same X and Z coordinates simply by making sure that their midpoint, the Y coordinate, is shared. Isn't that cool? But now, we're gonna do one more little exploit so that we can travel from here up to the nether roof without having to fly all the way up to the swine track. So for that, we're going to need 10 obsidian to build one more portal. Let's see. Looks like we've got just about enough. And let's head back into the nether. And coming out here, let's place another portal uh, over here. Perfect. Now, if I've done my measurements correctly, yes, it takes us right up here to the swine track, and if we go through it again, yep, 
we're on the nether roof. So we just figured out a way to exploit nether portals in a vertical order, one above the other, such that we can get all the way up here to the nether roof. We haven't broken any bedrock. We can get up here to the nether roof without having to fly anywhere. I'd say that's a win all around. Let me know how you do trying this method. Being up here on the nether roof reminds me, we got a pork shop to build. So just down here from our central island portal, right next to the High Moose Sanctuary is this lovely little spot here that could easily be flattened out and contain a certain shop. A shop that will protect society. By providing pork for the masses, we remove the temptation to eat steak. The sacred mushroom cows are holy. So let us give praise to the High Moo right here in the shadow of her sanctuary. Oh, and, um, and a blind cubsy space back there. And I'll bring you back once I've got something laid out here that looks a bit more like a pork shop. And while I'm doing that, take a look at this clip about another book we found in our base. Did you see that? There's a book here. Hmm. Wonder what it says. Brother Shepherd. A citizen of the realm has led actions that have led to the assisted passing of one of our sacred bovine. The realmer who calls himself Joushlander has admitted to taking steps to see one of our brother Moos pass to the giant pasture in the sky. Oh, oh dear. The High Moo is asking of you to make sure that Joushlander understands such actions will be met with a stern pranking. Sincerely, the High Moo. Our mushroom cows are sacred. We can't have Joushlander killing them off. No, something must be done. It is time for the sacred order of the bovine to act. I knew I kept this chicken farm for a reason. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll do it. Let's pay Joush a visit. Now, Joush doesn't live on the island. He lives in these domes offshore of the island. So let's go down and see where he stores his food. This place is pretty cool. He's got these tanks with axolotls in them, and he's got the villagers working working hard. Let's see if we can see one of them. Uh, working hard. Yep, there's a villager there. Working hard down below. Uh, this appears to be the top. I think we can go down a level. Yep. And yes, so this is the level that the villagers are all farming the crops, and it goes all the way around. There are 12 of these guys. Oh, wait. It goes down further. This is... Hmm. Ah, this is where all the food comes. So let's leave him some food, along with a little message from the Divine Moo. Joushlander, it has come to the attention of the Order of the Sacred Bovine that you have brought about the passing of one of our sacred mushroom cows. The High Moo is not pleased with your actions. But the High Moo is also a kind and benevolent deity, and as such is extending to you this grace. She who dwells in holy shroom light will provide you with food for many days until your base overrunneth with it, that you may learn to trust to her mercy and regard the lives of her earthly sisters with honor. Nightly yours, a servant of the Divine Moo. So let's make sure Joush has food for the next few weeks. I didn't say the food was going to be ready to eat. Guys, you're going to make someone very happy. It looks like some of them are uh, making their way upstairs. <laughs> Hi guys. No reason we can't put some up here too. Hey, you look after the place, okay? Joush is going to be so pleased when he sees how the High Moo has provided him with food for days. I'm sure he'll be much kinder to the mushroom cows now. Well, our work for the Holy Moo is done. Time to get... Excuse me, I'm trying to film here. Trying to get... Try, time... Yeah. Time to get back to building. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It is the next day here on the Inner Realm server, and in that time, I have built this lovely stairway.
I'm just kidding. That's, that's not all. That's not all I built. I also built the pork shop. Complete with neon the. <laughs> Look at it. I kind of dig it. We got the pork shop. We got a little eating area out here. I mean, come on, every bar come come on, every every bar every barbecue place has to have outdoor seating, picnic tables, right? Right? Am I am I am I wrong there? Of course I'm not. And clearly there've been uh, you know people here at these uh, at these white plastic chairs. Um, yeah, they were eating pork and eating some f fruit. And seriously, these guys need to clean up after themselves. But if we head inside the pork shop, you'll see we've got plenty of selection. You can see the uh, you can see the kitchens back there with supplies. Looks like over here uh, they're making. Oh, you know what they're making? They're making pork wraps. Mm-hmm. Pork wraps. You didn't think I could build a shop without a couple puns in there, right? It's called the pork shop. You know, pork shop like pork chop. Oh, I love the puns. So anyway, over here, you can get pork chops, pork wraps, and peas. A lot of people have needed peas here on the server. I don't know if they just like them with their pork chops or maybe they've found another use for the little green things. And over here, we're selling more pork chops cream cakes for those who want a little dessert and for those who don't want to hang around we've got takeaway baskets yep whole bunch of takeaway baskets and then the neat thing is if you come around here outside ooh, ooh, it's nighttime hopefully it'll stay night and i want to show you what the sign looks like at nighttime uh, as you walk around outside you can look back into the kitchen see the smoker working uh we got some knives hanging here on the wall uh he's making his pork wraps down there Ooh, quick, before it gets light. Look at it. Look how it shines. Look how it shines in the night. The pork shop. Want to see what it looks like from the sky? Oh, I love it so much. Look at this roof. Uh, not only do we have, uh, not do only do we have the chimneys coming up here, but we made the roof out of mushroom. Thought it was very appropriate. And these lovely... Deep slate tiles. Ooh, listen to that sound. That's a cool sound. So we can also go down. Ow, ow, ow. I always do that. I plant the naughty berries. Uh, and we can go over here and look back in this kitchen as well and see he's chopping up. Ooh, that must have been a big hoglin. But he's chopping it up, cooking it up, getting it ready to sell to the public. Now, you might be wondering, why did I use iron bars here? Well, I had originally wanted to use all black glass. It was really a nice look, but watch this. Watch this. Look at the, see the smoke? See the smoke coming up? Look, look, smoke doesn't show behind glass. Come on. We should be able to see those particle effects behind glass. Oh, Mo Yang, please, please. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for this episode. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. The Pork Shop is open. Now accepting donations in two handy locations. The Pork Shop, serving the best food in the game. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to leave you with this little clip from Il Mango. Everybody believes him. See you next time. I would even argue that steak or pork chop that have the same nutritional value are even better than golden carrots. For normal gameplay, steak or pork chop is my choice of food. And in order to explain it, you have to take a look at the numbers behind it.